Hello and welcome to this edition of Back in History. In this edition, we bring to you the story of the Titanic. From its construction up to the time of its sinking, we also discuss the outcome of the committee that was set up by the United States of America to investigate the mishap and the one set up by Britain. We also discuss the lessons from the disaster and the measures that have been taken to avoid similar occurrences. Titanic was not just a vessel for the movement of goods from one seaport to another. It was more than that. It was a massive seagoing vessel. It had capacity to carry several persons and tons of goods in each journey. It was luxurious and had everything anyone would need to attain comfort in a sea-moving vessel. It was the first of its kind in the history of marine transportation in the world. It was tested and approved and was described as unsinkable. But all these attributes of these gigantic beasts of the sea crashed into the bottom of the sea in less than three hours on 15th April 1912 in the course of its very first official journey. It was unbelievable, but it happened. And the reality was tragic. More than 1,500 lives were lost in what was recorded as the deadliest sinking of a single ship on planet Earth at the time. The contract for the building of the Titanic was made in September 1908 at the cost of 1.5 million pounds. And the company that was contracted to build the ship was Harland & Wolf. Harland & Wolf is a British shipbuilding company based in Belfast, Northern Ireland. The owner of the ship was White Star Line. White Star Line was one of the most prominent shipping lines in the world at the time, providing passenger and cargo services between the British Empire and the United States of America. Harland & Wolf is famous for having built the majority of the ocean liners for the White Star Line, other than the Titanic. The architectural design for Titanic was drawn by the best marine architect at the time, and the construction work commenced in earnest, and in March 1909, the ship was already laid down. In April 1912, construction work was completed and eight days after, the ship made its maiden voyage from Southampton in England and headed to New York City in the United States of America. Titanic was 175 feet tall and had a tonnage capacity of 46,329 tons. In this maiden voyage, Titanic carried a total of 2,223 persons, passengers, and crew members added together. Titanic was the largest luxurious ship afloat at the time of its maiden voyage. It was built with advanced safety features such as watertight compartments and remotely activated watertight doors, contributing to its reputation as being an unsinkable ship. Titanic had everything. It had first-class accommodation for the rich passengers and VIPs and also had apartments for other passengers. In its luxury apartment, for instance, there was a gymnasium, a swimming pool, a smoking room, high-class restaurants and cafes, a Turkish bath, and hundreds of opulent cabins. It was built with the best attainable materials and was equipped with lifeboats that could be deployed in the event of an emergency for evacuation. As noted earlier, Titanic was everything. It was safe, it was secure, and was watertight. But the 15th day of April 1912 had a different plan for Titanic. The Titanic was cruising on its way to New York City. It cruised into the North Atlantic Ocean 
and expected to cruise through the Atlantic and reach its destination safely and on schedule. But the captain and the crew of Titanic did not know that something disastrous was waiting for them. Despite a few warning signs, its captain may not have thought that the situation was that bad. There was iceberg and the iceberg was large, deep into the sea, hard like the rock and extremely dangerous. The Titanic was thus in for trouble and the trouble was really near to the ship. In a few minutes time, the ship cruised into the iceberg, hitting the starboard side of the ship, creating a series of holes below the waterline. In that process, the body of the ship was fatally injured. It is reported that five out of the 14 watertight compartments of the ship were seriously breached. Water then started gushing into the ship, and in less than three hours from when the accident occurred, Titanic, which was said to be unsinkable, sank into the bottom of the ocean. The unthinkable had just occurred and the impact was devastating and deadly. Before the sinking of the ship to the ocean floor, rescue operations were carried out using the emergency boats that were in the Titanic for rescue purposes. In this process, a total of 706 persons were rescued. Out of this number, 492 were passengers while 214 were crew members. While the rescue operations were ongoing, the ship continued to sink steadily but surely and in the process exposing the remaining passengers and crewmen to life-threatening cold and to death. Some died before the arrival of the ship on the seabed. In the end, a total of 1,517 lives were lost to the sinking of the world's most sophisticated, most luxurious, and most celebrated ship at the time. This was the biggest loss of human lives in one ship as of 1912. Being a luxury brand, there was a group of band men hired for the journey to make musical renditions from time to time to the crew and passengers. It is reported that while the ship was sinking and as women, children and others were being evacuated, the band's men sang to the end, the now famous nearer my God to thee, nearer to thee. They continued, even though it be a cross that raised me, still all my song shall be nearer my god to thee nearer my god to thee nearer to thee though like the wanderer the sun gone down darkness be over me my rest a stone yet in my dreams i would be nearer my god to thee nearer my god to thee nearer to thee there let the way appear steps on to heaven all that thou sendest me in mercy giving angels to beckon me nearer my god to thee nearer my god to thee nearer to thee end of quote the news of the tragic end of the titanic shook the world beyond description the news was first relayed to the world by other ships that were on the sea within the nautical radius of the accident scene. Note that some ships were also accused of failing to respond quickly to distress radio calls for rescue. The news was published in virtually all leading newspapers around the world and there were tributes from all over the world to condole with the families of the deceased persons. Titanic was a luxury brand and the first of its kind at the time, and it had several wealthy persons on board the ship. John Jacob Aston, an American businessman and real estate developer, 
was the richest man on the ship. He died in the sinking of the Titanic. The industrialist Benjamin Guggenheim, the famous painter and sculptor Francis Davis Miller, also died in the sinking of the Titanic. Bankers, lawyers, manufacturers, academics, journalists, and many other very important persons also perished in the disaster. Thomas Andrews, the chief architect who designed the ship, was also on board the ship. He also lost his life in the mishap. The ship was captained by Captain Edward Smith. Edward had worked in the British Navy as a captain and had served as a master of numerous White Star Line vessels and had considerable amount of experience with ships. At the time of his death in the Titanic, Edward had put in a total of 40 years in the sea as a captain. He was thus a well-experienced seaman. Reports have it that Captain Edward Smith did all within his power to prevent panic in the ship and did his best to assist in the evacuation of passengers. In the words of Major Arthur Godfrey Pouchen of the Royal Canadian Yacht Club, it has been stated that, quote, Captain Edward Smith was doing everything in his power to get women in the evacuation boat and to see that they were lowered properly. For him, he was simply doing his duty in regard to the lowering of the boats. End of quote. One of the passengers in the first class segment of the ship by name, Robert Williams Daniel, had this to say about Captain Smith. Unquote. Captain Smith was the biggest hero I ever saw. He stood on the bridge and shouted through a megaphone, trying to make himself heard. End of quote. It is also reported that just before the ship went down finally, Captain Smith was still busy releasing members of his crew to leave the ship to save their lives. He then carried out a final tour of the deck to ensure that everyone that could be rescued was indeed rescued. He then announced to the remaining members of the crew in the following words, unquote, Now it is every man for himself. He also said to the men, unquote, Boys, do your best for the women and children and look out for yourselves. End of quote. He then walked onto the bridge of the ship alone and this was the last reliable sight of Captain Smith. A few minutes later, the ship made its final descent to the seabed and the remaining persons on board, including Captain Smith, perished in the belly of the sea. The body of the legendary Captain Smith was never found and has not been found till this day. Captain Smith has been celebrated as a hero by many persons for his selfless humanitarian disposition and compassion for others on this inauspicious day of the sinking of the Titanic. Captain Smith has also been criticized by others for his role in the sinking of the Titanic. Panels of inquiry were immediately constituted, one in the United States of America and another by the government of Great Britain, to ascertain the causes of the mishap and the degree of loss. Survivors were invited to testify at the panels. In the United States, the Titanic hearings were conducted by a special subcommittee of the Senate Commerce Committee and chaired by Senator William Smith. The hearings began on April 19, 1912, at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City. The next week, the hearings were moved to the new caucus room of the Russell Senate Office Building in Washington, D.C. They were the first hearings to be held in that room. A total of 82 witnesses testified about ice warnings that were ignored, and the inadequate number of lifeboats the ship's speed, the failure of nearby ships to respond to Titanic's distress calls, and the treatment of passengers of different classes. The hearings concluded on May 28, 1912, when Senator Smith visited the Titanic sister ship Olympic at the port in New York to interview some of its crew members. 
When the Titanic sank, the Olympic was about 500 miles away. The subcommittee hearing transcripts were published and issued as Senate Document 726, 62nd Congress. At the end of the sittings of the committee, a report was issued, and the report's findings were as follows. 1. A lack of emergency preparations that left Titanic's passengers and crew in a state of absolute unpreparedness and the evacuation had been chaotic. 2. That the ship's safety and life-saving equipment had not been properly tested. 3. That the lack of lifeboats was the fault of the British Board of Trade, to whose laxity of regulation and hasty inspection the world is largely indebted for this awful tragedy. 4. That the SS Californian had been much nearer to Titanic than the captain is willing to admit and that the British government should take drastic action against him for his actions. The committee also made recommendations to avoid future disaster, namely 1. That ships should slow down on entering areas known to have drifting ice. 2. That navigational messages should be brought promptly to the bridge and disseminated as required. 3 that there should be enough lifeboats for all on board. 4. That all ships equipped with wireless sets should maintain communications at all times of the day and night. 5. That new regulations were needed to govern the use of radio telegraphy. 6. That adequate boat drills were to be carried out for passengers. The presentation of the U.S. report was accompanied by two speeches, one by Senator Smith and the other by Senator Isidore Reyna, a Democrat from Maryland. The United Kingdom, the country from where the Titanic took off, also held an inquiry into the disaster. The inquiry was overseen by High Court Judge Lord Mercy and was held in London from 2nd May to 3rd July 1912. The hearings took place mainly at the London Scottish Drill Hall in London. The investigation went on for a total of 42 days. About 100 witnesses testified, answering more than 25,000 questions. A final report was published on 30th July 1912. The report found that Titanic sinking was solely the result of colliding with the iceberg, not due to any inherent flaws with the ship. In his words, Lord Mercy stated thus, unquote, The court, having carefully inquired into the circumstances of the above-mentioned shipping casualty, finds, for the reasons appearing in the next year too, that the loss of the said ship was due to collision with an iceberg, brought about by the excessive speed at which the ship was being navigated. End of quote. It also found that the ship's officers had been complacent, that there were too few lifeboats available, and that they had not been properly filled or manned with trained seamen. The inquiry concluded that Californian, quote, could have pushed through the ice to the open water without any serious risk, and could have rightly come to the assistance of the Titanic and could have saved many lives, if not all of the lives that were lost. End of quote. Californian was a ship sailing not too far away from where the Titanic got stuck. The Board of Trade was criticized for its inadequate regulations, notably the failure to ensure that enough lifeboats were provided and that crews were given proper training in their use. It is worthy of note that in contrast to the American inquiry, Lord Mercy's report did not condemn the failures of Captain Smith. The report found that although Smith was at fault for not changing course or slowing down, he had not been negligent because he had followed long-standing practice which had not previously been shown to be unsafe. The inquiry noted that British ships alone had carried 3.5 million passengers over the previous decade 
with the loss of just 10 lives. It concluded that Smith had merely done, quote, only that which other skilled men would have done in the same position, end of quote. It is, however, instructive to note that the recommendations of the UK inquiry, along with the recommendations of the United States Senate inquiry, led to changes in maritime safety practices aimed at avoiding such monumental loss of human lives and material resources. The bodies of 121 victims of the mishap, mostly the passengers from Canada, were retrieved and transported to Fairview Cemetery in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada, where they were interred and tombstones erected in their memory. Other bodies were taken by relatives and buried at their preferred locations and cemeteries. Several other bodies sank with the ship and got dismembered by high current and dispersed across hundreds of miles. The body of the captain of the ship, Captain Smith, for instance, was not recovered and has not been found till today. After the sinking of the Titanic, ships have been built to be able to identify icebergs many nautical miles away and take cautionary measures to avoid the kind of disaster that befell the Titanic. Ships are also made to carry sufficient lifeboats for all passengers on board, irrespective of the number of passengers. Most of these and other recommendations were incorporated into the International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea, passed in 1914. In the words of Richard Bennett and his colleague Jeffrey Jensen, in their article titled Nearer My God to Thee, The Sinking of the Titanic, published recently, it has been stated thus, unquote, The scope and character of the tragedy, the pitying of man's pride, technology and industrial might against the enduring indomitability of nature, the utter carelessness and needlessness of it all, the irony of the maiden voyage being its last, all bear to the elements of a Greek tragedy. Unlike scores of other marine tragedies, the wreck of the Titanic continues to speak to something deep in our psyche, a morality lesson for the ages, as if the entire human race were on board that fateful April night. End of quote. The unfortunate sinking of the Titanic took place more than 113 years ago, but the memory of the mishap shall remain green in the annals of marine transportation for many more years to come. Thanks for watching this episode of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel or follow the page for regular notifications on every new video.